I spend most of my days training other people, teaching group classes, holding pads, sparring, personal fitness training, trying to motivate unhealthy people to move and get healthy, working to better educate my clients on how to more effectively become stronger, leaner, healthier, better, more capable, to overcome whatever obstacles they're facing. And sometimes they just need someone to talk to. But when I have time for myself, I take full advantage. I retired from professional fighting two years ago after my school got caved in. The doctors told me I'd never fight again. The damage was irreparable. That it's too dangerous to put the gloves back on. That I could get brain damage or killed by punches that before would have only been mildly annoying. So, people are always astonished when they see me training. Why do you keep training like that? What's the point? They ask. I still keep dropping my right hand when I throw my left, but I train now for the same reason I always have. To make myself stronger physically, mentally, spiritually. We live in a world where everyone expects mediocrity. Where people put in the bare minimum to meet the standards so they can hold on to jobs they hate for one more day so they can get one more dollar. I don't live my life like that. I want to push myself to the limit whenever possible. When I find a routine that scares me, that challenges me, that exhausts me, that wears me out, I embrace it. I learn to love it. I do it until it gets easy. Then I find another one, a harder one. Recently someone asked me a hypothetical question. If everyone looked like athletes, or fitness models, or bodybuilders, without any effort, would you still work out? Yeah, of course I would. I don't go to the gym to look a certain way. If I cared about the way I looked, I never would have become a cage fighter. I go there to perform. I go there to break barriers and surpass them. I go there to learn. To learn some of the most significant lessons life has to offer. Lessons that can only be learned through adversity, through challenge, through pressure, through time under tension. Lessons the money can't buy. Now, I could tell you some nonsense about how martial arts isn't about violence, and how it's really about some deep, super important, transcendent, glorious principles, but at the end of the day, it's about whatever you want it to be about. And this is what I want. When I was fighting, people would always ask me, aren't you afraid that you'll get hurt? Nobody ever asked me that when I worked in a factory where I saw several of my co-workers pulled into machinery that tore their limbs apart. No one ever asked me if I was afraid of potential violence from the inmates when I worked at the state mental hospital. Nobody ever asked me if I was afraid of school shootings when I worked in public schools. No one ever asked me if I was afraid of crossing the street because a car might hit me, or driving because there might be an accident or the highest statistical probability of accidents around the home, or heart disease, or stroke so prevalent in the world today, or waking up in the morning because anything could go wrong, for that matter. What those folks fail to understand is that life is dangerous. Life is danger. No one gets out alive. Everybody dies, but not everybody lives. Life is a fight. Fight back. <laughs>